So now I would like to take this time to introduce a very special guest. He is the president of your UM system. He's also the chancellor of this university as well. That's a, that's a task. That is a task. Four universities, we have a lot going on every day. Dr. Choi is not only a friend of extension, he is also an advocate for the land grant mission. He's an advocate for you every day. Every day he's an advocate for you. He understands the importance of the work that you do across this state. He understands that this state matters. When he's in Jeff City talking to legislatures, he's an advocate for us. And so I want to give a very warm welcome to <laughs> President Choi. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> I was hoping that he would go on because I learned so much. And Chad, let me thank you for your leadership. And I appreciate your genuine concern for citizens of Missouri and the important work that you do. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you. You know, as I was listening to Chad, there were some statistics that were concerning. The health disparity that ranks our state in the bottom quintile of the United States. 16% of, of children that live in poverty and 20% of children that have food insecurity. And we can go on and on and on. Most people, when they hear that, will probably feel despondent, probably feel powerless by the gravity of the problems that face our children in this state. But not you. You get up thinking about ways that you can impact lives one by one, and they add up to the incredible impact that your organization has. So on behalf of the UM system, I want to thank you. You make this state a better state to live for our children and the citizens. And I know that's hard work, being out in the field, taking the important work that we do in education and research to translate that in a way that people can use in practical ways. I wanna thank you for the important work that you do. And I wanna begin with that. I also wanna share with you that you're part of this university. You're an important part of this university. You're an extension of this university. And the university has three key missions. One is student success. And when it comes to student success, the work that you do, that your colleagues do at this university has placed this university among the very best. Among this group of flagship universities, because of our commitment to affordability, high quality education, and the outcomes, measurable outcomes, we're ranked number one among this group. Some of those universities, or not some, all of them are fine, fine universities, world-class universities. So we have that going for us, which is very important. We're also a research university that's a member of AAU. That was a decision that was made in 1908. And it's a decision that was made to say that research informs teaching and vice versa, and to be able to explore knowledge that has not been explored before so that we can make our world a better place. And look what the university has done over the past 11 years. This is research expenditures, total research expenditures for the entire university. And from 2013, where it was 236 million, we're now gonna to top $450 million, almost a doubling during that period. But during that period, it's not as if we increased the number of faculty. In fact, the total number of tenure, tenure track faculty members went down during that period. Our faculty members capture more of the market share by proposing innovative ideas in precision health, precision agriculture, to 
works that benefit our economy through engineering and the sciences. And last but not important, as part of that three-part mission, the work that you do. These numbers have been shared time and time again. But the fact that we reach almost 800,000 people each year through over 300 programs that you lead throughout the state has the impact that we all seek. Because we know we're doing important work, but how do we get it out to the people that can benefit from it, share their experiences, and to also speak to those supporters that can in turn help support the university. The next slide that I'm gonna show is a direct result of your work. What I'm showing you is state appropriations as a function of fiscal years. And if you look at fiscal year 20, <clears throat> we had $360 million from the state. That's a lot of money each year coming from the state. It helps to pay for our salaries, fringe benefits, scholarships, and other programs that we need to continue to do at our university. Last year, $487 million. That's because the citizens of Missouri and by proxy, the legislators believe the important work that we do in student success, research, and engagement. So this is something that you can look at and say, my work matters. My work is valued. This allows us to continue to increase our work, whether it's in agriculture support, rural mental health, economic development throughout the state of Missouri. And specifically for extension, last year we received five additional million dollars that's used to hire more field specialists and, and staff members throughout the extension programs throughout the entire state. Unfortunately, it was not included in this year's budget, but we have plans. We have plans to approach the state again and ask for even more money because of the impact that your work is having. And this is something that's gonna continue. And at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna share with you what I would like for you to do to help us make the case to the state that investment in extension is an investment in the state of Missouri and its citizens. At the heart of it all, it's not the buildings, it's not the instruments that are out in the field that makes it all work, it's the people. And this is a sampling of award winners this year, faculty and staff. And I believe some of them are here today. So if you see your face on there, please stand and, and face the audience. Thank you for your hard work and commitment and congratulations. Because of your success, we're gonna be hiring more, more colleagues. And we're hearing from you. You are saying to us, you know, Chad and Moon and, and everyone that works in leadership here, I want you to know that I'm committed to this, but I'm overworked. There's so much to do. And so we need more support. So during the past year, Look at the number of faculty and staff that were hired in extension. This was during the pandemic. And then we have more plans to hire additional field faculty and staff. And those are some of the areas that have the most critical need. And once we receive additional funding from the state next year, that list is going to grow. So this is a time where you need to think about what your needs are and prepare a plan that'll be collected by Chad and his team so that we can make a strong case to the state beginning in January of next year. Now, you're a trusted partner, not because you have the aura of being part of the University of Missouri, but because you deliver. You deliver to the communities that need the most help. Do you remember, um, 
back in the day when we had to use modems to connect, it would make this really, some of the younger people are thinking, what were they talking about? It used to make these no, this noise, right? It was so frustrating. Like downloading would do this. In some communities, they would accept that. They would say, I would take that and having no signal at all. The work that Allison and BJ Tanksley has have done to provide broadband, to provide 1.7 billion. Now they'll tell you it wasn't all them, but they were a critical component to making sure that we receive one of the highest amount of, of federal funding for this program in the entire United States. And if you look at the ways that they support, even something as simple as how to log on, how to get ISP service once you get broadband, how to use technology effectively so that they can pursue their education, or maybe even tele telemedicine visit, or to log on for a job application. All of those support programs are available through this program. I know Allison is here, is BJ here as well? BJ? How about others that participated in this program? Are you, if you're here, stand up, please. Thank you, thank you. There's also a recognition. I mean, it's, it's an important recognition that University of Missouri has a land grant mission with the extension that serves our agriculture economy, because it is the most important economy. And there's a state goal of doubling the economy of agriculture by 2030. Now that's a very ambitious, bold plan, but can we do it? Yes, we can, but we also have to be realistic. We have to plan for this. And I put a number up there, 10.5%. Can anyone tell me what that represents? 10.5%. That's a trick question. It can mean anything. It can mean anything. But what it means is over the next seven years, we have to grow the economy at 10.5% per year. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, how do we do that? We do it by investing in programs that work, whether it's sustainable agriculture, because of climate change, we're also noticing that the arable lands are moving more and more northward. There are gonna be more droughts in the future. And how do we use our advanced genomic technologies to help with the Show Me Heifer program? All of these programs based on research must be extended to the farmers and the cattle, uh, cattle farms throughout the state of Missouri for it to work. And that's gonna be key going forward. You may have recently heard that we are one of the leading universities when it comes to sustainable agriculture. Professor Rob Myers, Professor Myers, are you here today? No, he's not here today. Maybe he's busy out in the field, which he should be doing, which is making sure that our sustainable agriculture farm practices go into the field directly, whether it's through crop rotation, nutrient management, or just having better, uh, better agroforestry practices so that we bring that business back to the state of Missouri. And in this particular case, he's won together $35 million, and that is the largest grant in the history of the University of Missouri. And it happened in an area that benefits Missourians so directly, and that helps all of us through our economy. Another very important extension that was realized a few years ago was to serve rural medicine. How many people here have had heard stories from your community where hospitals have closed or that there are not enough primary care physicians in the area. We hear that all the time, all the time. But what are we gonna do about it? We can't just say, well, 
we can't really help you because we're in the middle of Missouri. We can't deliver that health care. But we have creative people that work on solution. And I'll put a number up there, 36.5%. Another trick question, anyone know what that is? Okay. Missouri counties with no hospital access. For those of you that live in Columbia, you have access to Boone, MU Healthcare, CAP Region, SSM. You have a lot of choices. But imagine if you have to travel 50 miles for the nearest hospital. And it's not only lacking hospitals, it's lacking the primary care physicians, advanced practitioners in that community that want to stay in that community. But instead of wallowing in despair because we feel powerless to help, we have people here that are making a difference each and every day. We also have our rural medical programs at Springfield, and that's operated by MU School of Medicine. We have one now in St. Joseph, operated by UMKC School of Medicine. Very successful models that actually get our student, medical students acclimated to rural communities, have clinical practices in rural communities, and develop a deep affinity to serving rural parts of the state. That's a much more effective way of retaining those medical students in those communities as physicians than giving, let's say, a uh, reverse reimbursable loan program that says, if you come to our community for five years, we'll waive your tuition. Well, after five years, typically they move on, they move out after obligation is met. A very unique program that's led by Professor Lefebvre and Dr. Quinn is the Rural Medicine Program. They received funding through this since 1995 and recently received $16 million to increase the track of students that want to practice medicine in rural parts of the state. They may be from rural parts of the state. They want to go back to their community, but they need support financial support, uh, support in terms of getting acclimated to medical school, finding residencies in rural parts of the state. All of this is made possible through programs like this. Kathleen, if I can ask you to stand, as well as anyone else that works in the rural medicine program. So please stand. Well, thank you. This is very important work. I want to show this video partly because I like the video. Second, it shows the reach of our university. And many university hospitals like MD Anderson, Mayo Clinic, or Mount Sinai would say we have the best surgeons for oncology the best surgeons for this specialty and so forth, but you have to go there. Not many universities can say, we don't care where you live. We'll make sure that we produce the medicine that you need to be treated in your local hospital. So with that. From his proud home in Columbia, Missouri, the University of Missouri is one of the most important and reliable producers of medical isotopes for treating cancer in the United States. University of Missouri Research React, known as MERV, is the only U.S. producer of four critical medical isotopes. Researchers at MERV create radioisotopes that are used to diagnose cancers and heart disease, and in the treatment of liver, thyroid, pancreatic, and prostate cancers. These are life-saving treatments that those with cancer desperately need. First central location and unique capabilities ensure rapid transportation of radioisotopes to more than 1.6 million patients a year across the nation and beyond. The demand for radioisotopes is rapidly increasing, however, and work must begin on a new, larger reactor, NextGen MER. NextGen MER will solidify the University of Missouri's position as one of the most important sources of radioisotopes 
while expanding critical cancer-fighting research and medical isotope production for generations to come. Without a new reactor, these critical radioisotopes may not be available in the U.S. in the future, leading to dependency on foreign sources. Despite their minute size, radioisotopes create massive opportunities in the treatment and imaging of numerous cancers and diseases. But how do they work? A radioactive compound produced in myrrh is linked to a targeting molecule that seeks out certain proteins on a tumor. The compound, linker, and targeting molecule will form a radiopharmaceutical. Cutting edge science and medicine meets when the radiopharmaceutical is administered into the body and sticks to cancer cells. The radioisotopes release energy that acts as a wrecking ball to cancer cells, eventually destroying them while leaving healthy cells unaffected. As a result of this advanced treatment, patients have the ability to resume a vibrant and healthy life. For more than 50 years, Murr has operated safely and has been at the center of advancements in science and medicine. Next-gen Murr will take us further into the future, providing accessible and life-saving innovation for generations. One point six million people each year. I mean, that's incredible. That's the type of impact that we have. And when you talk to people that you meet in the community, sometimes they'll share with you, you know, my my husband is going through prostate cancer treatment, or my daughter is getting thyroid cancer treatment. Remember that those radiopharmaceutical treatments are only made possible because of the work that we do here. If you can share that message more and more, people will begin to realize what an incredible asset that we have for precision health right here in the middle of the state of Missouri. And our goal is to build a new reactor over the next eight years that will expand our capabilities to have even more life treating, life saving treatments through radio pharmaceutical. It's truly impressive. So now let me talk just briefly. I'm looking at the clock, just very briefly about supporting Missouri. I always have a hard time saying this word because I watched the movie, My Cousin Vinny, youth, and, uh, but it's such an important topic. And for this group, I really don't have to say much about these programs because they are so universal, so universal. The impact that has made, that 4-H has made in Chad's life or the lives of people that are here that are part of 4-H. How many people are part of 4-H? Raise your hands. That's terrific. How many people have children that are part of 4-H? All right, well, we need to get some more children involved then. But um, this program impacts children from an early age, develops the, not only the personal, but professional development they need to be successful in their lives, regardless of what discipline they want to pursue. And now that Lupita is here, I see a lot of people here with, with green on that signifies 4-H. Please stand, all the 4-H people, please. Even if you're not wearing green, please stand. It's truly, truly meaningful work. And the other important pro program is FFA. And I had a chance to meet Grant Norfleet. What an incredible person. Next week, he's gonna be representing us at the national FFA meeting. I can't think of a better ambassador for the FFA program that we have in this state. And if you've not gone to the Missouri FFA convention, last time they held it in Hearns Auditorium, all produced, scripted by FFA members, it is quite the experience. I was just blown away knowing that this was done by students that were 16, 17 years old. A tremendous program and I know that the FFA FFA leaders are here as well and the FFA participants may I ask you to stand oh really I just want oh hey good to see you again thank you thank you for your support so let me uh, end by talking a talking briefly about the programs that we have 
at each of the four campuses. I was down there in the Boot Hill in Car Carothersville in, in August of this year. And the community was opening up a, a home for men that were transitioning from prison to the, uh, to the community. And it was opened by the Divine Holiness uh, Organization that's doing incredibly important work for that very uh, poor community. And I didn't realize it, but when I went there, I didn't realize they were gonna be there, but Paralic had a table with Paralic members. And I have to say, I wasn't aware, even aware that we had Paralic. And so at the meeting, Brad and his colleagues started talking to me about Paralic. And I'm thinking, what a great program. What a great program that serves parents, especially in this time when children are facing the struggles, the mental health challenges, having to go through COVID and to have a trusted partner like the University of Missouri working with Paralink and Extension to say, we're here for you. We know what you're, what you're going through. And we're gonna make sure that you have the skills that you need to lead parenting in the best way possible for your children. So Brad, you're here. Who else is here from Paralink? Please stand. Oh, Brad, you're the only one. Good. Well, welcome. The other program for Missouri s and I don't believe we have anyone here from Missouri s and but they lead Project Lead the Way. Project Lead the Way engages young children in areas of science and engineering and encourages them to pursue a STEM pathway. Is there a better university to do this than Missouri s and Missouri s and was recently ranked as a number five best value university in the entire United States based on student outcomes. Talk about a way that we can lift families out of poverty. Students that graduate from Missouri s and have a starting salary of $72,000. And they also do internships that are paid internships while they go to the university. This is a tremendously important program. And this has a statewide reach. At UMSO, they're tackling a very important problem of children's literacy. And if you look at this statistic, you'll find that fourth grade and eighth grade reading in the state of Missouri is below the national level. We have to do better. We have to do better. And they wrote a proposal. Professor Shea Kirkhoff led this effort. We see the $5 million proposal to make reading fun so that reading is accept, accessible to those that want to further their education going forward. And this involves working closely with parents as well as the students to make sure that, that reading, which is fundamental, is part of that child's each and every day's existence. Last but not least, at UMKC, we have uh, Eric Camburn, who is leading this very important center that provides important opportunities. In metropolitan areas, children may not have opportunities for internships like they would in a college town like this. In a big city like St. Louis and Kansas City, these opportunities to show students, young students, that there's a path to productive careers in these different fields by having paid internships goes a long way in ensuring that we can have success for these students moving forward. So all across the universities, all four universities, faculty and staff are making a difference in the communities that they serve and throughout the state of Missouri. So let me end by asking you to consider these points. The first is, thank you. Continue to do the important work that you do. Please know that your work is greatly appreciated, not only by us, not only by us, but people that you're impacting each and every day. Continue to advocate for the university, not just extension. You're part of this larger organization. And stay updated on the important work. You'll find that this university has so many important work that is happening that it's hard to keep track of everything. But for you to know, for example, that 
we create 1.6 million doses of radioisotopes each year. That's a powerful piece of information that you can share with others. But there are many more nuggets like that. Last but not least, tell us what you're hearing from your community members about what we can do better, not just an extension, but at the university, at the university in terms of our academics and research. So with that, thank you once again. Have a great, great day. And, uh, you know, this weekend, we don't have a football game, but we're getting ready for Georgia. I want you to know that. And I've not checked my Twitter feed, but we're waiting to see if Ryan Wingo will be coming. Do you know if he's coming? Is he coming? Oh, he'll be here. Okay. You heard it from him. All right. Well, thank you and congratulations and keep up the great work. Thank you very much.